The cops show up right after I get a peek under Dag Horton's mask. They take my statement, then ask if I'd like to come and try the new coffee blend down at the station. I happen to know their coffee tastes like llama spit, but they're just being civil. When we get to the police station, I'm escorted into Mac Malden's office. You don't say. Yeah? Who told you that? Did you know the guy you threw off the roof? I didn't throw anybody off the roof, okay? Like I told your lackeys out there, we were rollerblading. Things got out of hand, he jammed his wheel, and the next thing I know... You seem to forget I'm a cop, and I'm a tired, pissed-off cop. If you keep getting on my nerves, I can put you in a drunk tank. I can do this whole thing again tomorrow. So. You chase the guy up to Rusty's funhouse. Then what? Well, there was a black Avatar speeder up on the roof waiting for the guy. I jumped him and we struggled, but he went right over the top. We got a witness says the attacker was carrying a box when he ran from the flamingo. We didn't find it. You know anything about that? No. I've told you everything I know. All right, Murphy, you can go. Your story matches up, right? There's one more thing. The NSA is getting involved in this. They're interested in that missing box. They're gonna wanna talk to you. Don't get too smart on this one, Murphy. You're in way over your head. Well, thanks for the tip. Oh, you're welcome. One more thing. Oh. Man, this is not where you're going to tell me. Stick around in town. We might have to ask you some more questions. How many times have you told me that of last came here? This case is getting way too complicated. There's a connection between Horton, the NSA, and the box Horton stole from Emily's apartment. But what is it? The NSA getting involved worries me. And then there's that gorgeous woman who got me off the hook. Who's she? I guess I need a plan of action. But first I need to talk to Emily and find out what she knows about Malloy. And then about the box Horton stole from her apartment. Sheesh, it's gonna be a busy day. Just the man I want to talk to. I understand the Black Arrow killer struck for the last time. Care to make any comment? Yeah, I've got a name for you. Dag Horton. Thanks for the lead. I'll see what I can find out about this Horton guy. This could be just what I need to top off my story on the Black Arrow Killer cover-up. Yeah, I'm sure the NSA is just gonna love it. Yeah, I know. Well, I arrived safe and sound in Phoenix. It's almost as hot here as it was in your apartment the other day. Oh, I just called to say hi, so... Hi! Well, I arrived safe and sound in Phoenix. It's... Hey, 
Let me buy you a drink, Mike. <laughs> What's the occasion? I heard you saved that girl up at the Flamingo. The least I can do for our local hero is to buy him a drink. Ah, she and I, we, we both got lucky. Listen, Mike, if you don't give yourself credit, no one else will. So what else can I do for you? I'm pretty sure I've never heard that name. So, you saved the girl at the Flamingo and caught the man who attacked her. So I suppose you think you're some sort of a big shot. Yeah, damn straight. Now maybe you'll give me the respect I deserve. Respect? Bah! You may have everyone else fooled, but I know dumb luck when I see it. I suppose you want me to help you again. Never heard the name in my life. I don't know anything about the NSA, and I don't care to. Of course I've heard about it. I just doubt I know any more about it than you. Someone bought the old Bijou Theater and turned it into the Fuchsia Flamingo. I'm not sure if that's an improvement. Come on in. Glad you came by. Been having problems with the cops? No. Nothing serious. You want a drink? Sure. Bourbon. Straight up, right? Right. How'd you guess? Physiognomy. It's a hobby of mine. You can tell almost anything about a person by their facial features. So I guess I have a bourbon face. Something like that. Listen, Murphy, I've got to apologize for the other night. See, that note that Emily got shook me up pretty bad, though. Yeah, I didn't want her to know I was worried. Well, don't sweat it. I guess I kind of have a distrustful face. Of course, that'd be your department. <laughs> well, I do want to thank you. You saved Emily's life. So she's okay? She's pretty rattled. But she isn't hurt. You know, if you'd come in any later than you did, She's upstairs, sleeping it off. I'm fine, Gus. I couldn't sleep anymore. Gus told me what you did. I don't know how to thank you. Well, I guess we cut it pretty close, but I'm glad you're okay. Thanks. Listen, Emily, it's not too much trouble. I'd like to ask you a few more questions. Come on, Murphy. She's been through enough already. Cops grilled her last night. Let's let it rest for a while. It's okay, Gus. I owe him. A couple more questions isn't going to hurt me. Go ahead, Tex. I really don't know too many people around here. The man who attacked you last night took something from your apartment. Mm -hmm. Looked like a small box. Do you know what it was? No. I mean, I don't know what was in it. I couldn't figure out how to open it. How'd you get it? Well, Thomas sent it to me. I don't know why anyone would want it. How did it arrive? Through some delivery service. It was wrapped in plain brown wrapper. How'd you know Thomas sent it to you? 
Well, I recognize the handwriting on the outside of the wrapper. Thomas is my husband. Pardon me for being stupid, but let me get this straight. You're Thomas Malloy's wife? Yeah. We were married about a year ago. So where's your husband? I don't know. Well, do you have any idea why he doesn't want you to know where he is? No. He just said it'd be better for me. Safer for me. I honestly don't know why he left. It was just plain brown paper. I threw it out, I guess. I don't know where it is. Gus bought this place last year. He spent a lot of time and money fixing it up. When it was done, he couldn't afford to hire a house band. So I said I'd sing for him. I heard Thomas mention that, but I don't know much about it. I'm afraid I'm not much help. This is Thomas, all right. I'm so worried about him. He doesn't look well, does he? I'm not very good with names. I really don't know too many people around here. It's not a very glamorous name. When I make it big, I'll change it to something more exciting. Actually, I'm feeling really beat. I'm gonna go back to bed. I'll see you guys later. She's a real trooper, isn't she? Yeah. Murphy, I really owe you. You ever need a favor? Just name it. Thanks. Keep that in mind. Right now, I'll I need as much information as I can get about Malloy. I'll tell you what I know. If I knew where he was, I'd tell you. But I haven't heard from him for almost a month. I think I threw it out in the dumpster behind the club. It might still be there. I've always wanted to own a nightclub. I've put my heart and soul into this place. Any business you can send my way, I'd really appreciate. I checked out the box Emily received, but I couldn't figure out how to open it. Doesn't sound familiar. I've heard it's the most powerful agency in the government. A couple things Malloy told me made me think they're after him for some reason. Don't know. Sorry. I think she's going to be okay. She's pretty resilient. Yeah, that's Malloy. Looks like it was taken recently. I don't know him. Doesn't sound familiar. Looks like a metal rod, maybe an antenna. This antenna isn't busted, I might be able to extend it. There we go. That looks like it could be the brown paper wrapper from the package Malloy sent to Emily. Snagged up on the light post, though. Oh, there's no return address or name. But there has to be something here that will give me a lead to Malloy. 
Maybe I need to take a closer look. So, the microdot on the wrapper contains a PB meter number. Probably some kind of postal code. Must identify which post office the package was sent from. Now I just need to find someone who would know which post office that is. This thing must have fallen out of Horton's pocket. Oh, this is a tracking device. Maybe Horton stashed the box he stole from Emily's apartment and was planning on using this to locate the box later. This operates the way most tracking devices do. The sound it emits will speed up the closer I get to the target. And he proclaimed in a mighty voice, Woe be unto ye, eaters of flesh! Cursed are those who partake of the sausage patty and link and sizzle. The tracking device should work fine down here. What's the tracking? The brick looks like it should come loose, but I can't get my fingers under it to move it.
A nice brick. Whoa. A small device is attached to the box. I'd better take a closer look before I do anything rash. Oh, it's a Claiborne mine. I've read about these. To deactivate it, the red photons must be transferred to the left, and vice versa for the green. They're transferred by using the small shuttle that has three black stripes on it and is now on the red side. The transfer chamber must be powered by a red or green power cell which is lighter color than the others. Red or green photons can be in the same chamber and in the shuttle, but if there's more of one color than the other, it creates an imbalance and the shuttle won't transfer. Uncle Sam wants to see you. Oh man, this isn't about those parking tickets. Shut up. All right. My new acquaintance is a good deal less cordial than the police were earlier. I'm thrown into the back of a black avatar speeder. A few minutes later, we fly into the industrial sector and land by a familiar building. Autotech. I'm led inside, straight to Jackson Cross's office. Welcome, Mr. Murphy. Please make yourself comfortable. Do you know where you are? In your office? That's correct. Do you know who I work for? Well, if it's about that student loan, I think you and I could work out a reasonable payment schedule. <laughs> this guy's a real joker, isn't he? <laughs> Mr. Murphy, did you ever hear of the uh, Graham Act? That's uh, an executive order that was enacted about 40 years ago when the United States was having trouble with terrorist groups. It gives our agency carte blanche when dealing with uh, internal security matters. So don't dick with me, Murphy. I'll pull out my gun and blow your face off. Well then, I guess you work for the NSA. Bravo! Give the man a big cigar. Now to the next question. 
Do you know why you're here? Are you trying to recruit me? Well, let me refresh your memory. You remember the other night, up on the roof? The man you threw off was an NSA agent. I didn't throw him off the roof. I can't help it if you hire clumsy people. Your actions contributed to the death of an NSA agent. Not to mention the small matter of interfering with an NSA investigation. Now you've got one minute to tell me all you know, or you'll find yourself the latest victim of the Graham Act. A girl hired me to find out who was stalking her. I kept an eye on her place. I saw your guy in her apartment. I chased him to the roof. He pulled out a gun. He tried to shoot me. We struggled and he fell. We've known for some time that high-level drug deals were going on at the Fuchsia Flamingo. That night, a shipment of euphoria was to be delivered. We had our agent at the girl's apartment to make the bust. Her life was never in any danger. You screwed up. I know that you're still holding something back. What is it? Look, I didn't ask to get mixed up in this case. I'm just a small-time P.I. And all I want to do right now is get out of your hair and go back to doing what people do when they're alive. So that's it. There's nothing more you want to tell me. Oh, well, there is one more thing. Your agent found a small metal box at the Flamingo. So you do have it. You should have said so in the first place. Now, do you want to tell us where it is? Will you cut me a deal? Oh, I'm not much of one for compromises, Mr. Murphy. Get me the box. I'll see what kind of mood I'm in. I've got it right here. Take it. So you beat us to the box. You impress me, Murphy. I'm going to do you the favor of a lifetime. I'm going to let you walk. But if I catch you meddling in NSA affairs one more time, I'm going to put a bullet right in your eyeball. Is that clear? Get this puke head out of my office. I'll be watching you, Murphy. Yeah, this is good. You can drop me anywhere along here. We will. Whoa! The NSA thugs are courteous enough to drop me off back at the Ritz. When I get to my apartment, I notice the door is slightly ajar. The government boys probably spent some time in my office looking for the box.